I have a boa, fluffy feathery boa, crown, funny glasses. This is a very bad Don Quixote del Flamingo impersonation. Although he doesn't really wear a crown. Although he is a former celestial dragon. So technically royalty. And he was king of Dressrosa. So he was royalty by that standard too. So. Uh, this video is just a one piece theory video. Get that crown off my head. And the this. And the boa. Go over there. All y'all can go over there. Okay, so uh, this is just a one piece theory video that I thought up a little while ago. Um, and I just, it involves the celestial dragons, and as you can tell by the uh, title of the video, Monkeys of Royalty. Um, I kind of went with the concept of, well, there's several different theories as to like Luffy's mother or Dragon's mother. And I kind of wanted to go with something a little bit different than that, but just the gist of that is that either A, it's the concept of the, you know, the Luffy or dragon being either related to the celestial dragons or being technically celestial dragons themselves is that either A, it was that um, when Garp joined the Marines, he ended up getting stationed at uh, Marie Joie at some point. I have a theory about that, but initially the concept is like, oh, he has the will of D, the world government maybe took notice, and they sent him to go and work at Marie Joie around the Celestial Dragon so they could at least keep an eye on him for a little while, possibly. <laughs> and then, you know, the theory is that, oh, he fell in love with like a female Celestial Dragon and like they had a child and that was Dragon, Monkey D Dragon, because um, he came along like with the next year after Garp joined the Marines. Um, and so it was like somewhere in that time frame he would have met Dragon's mother or possibly knew her beforehand and then that's when they had the child. But the, the theory is that, you know, Dragon is like a celestial dragon, you know, a half celestial dragon and then half, you know, monkey D. <laughs> um, and therefore, like, because his mother is a celestial dragon, he had, like, access to, like, this very high standard of living, very high... Um, you know, regards into, like, you know, uh, possible critical information, but at the very least, it's, like, knowledge of, like, the way that the celestial dragons work, and unfortunately, he probably also grew up around the concept of slaves, and then also seeing this fact that his father technically worked for his mother. Now, in the theories, it's never stated what celestial dragon family that they were from, which one of the 19 kingdoms they were from, you know, the 19 families, we don't know, that's that's never stated in the theory, but I mean, like, some of them have it where they are related to the Del Flamingo, the uh, Don Quixote family, which, given given the, uh, the legacy so far of that family, that wouldn't necessarily be surprising, but um, what we see also is part of that theory is that then, you know, at some point Dragon's mother died, and then he went to go live with his father more, and then ended up possibly joining the military himself, joining the Marines himself, working his way up through the ranks, and then he ended up just getting so disgusted in what he saw with, um, what the Marines allowed the Celestial Dragons to do with what the Celestial Dragons the, did themselves, and then they then, you know, then Dragon at that point in time just got so fed up with it that he just, like, left the Marines. And then eventually he was at the execution of Goldie Roger. And then from there is when that kind of, like, spurred him on to then create his Revolutionary Army, which is, of course, there we have, like, you know, Yvonne Cobb and, you know, Bello Betty and, you know, Morley and Karasu and Lindbergh and, you know, all the rest of the members of the you know, revolutionary army that we still have to this day, of course, and that's led to where Dragon is now and everything. And Wasabo possibly being captured by the world government at the moment, we'll see. Um, the other side of that theory is, and then it's like, you know, then like the other half of that theory is like, oh, Dragon then, you know, was a celestial dragon at the time or, you know, was born into that and then like eventually blah, 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 after he started the revolutionary army. Then there's multiple theories as to from there to a degree who Luffy's mother could be. And, you know, I don't subscribe to the crocodile theory that crocodile is Luffy's mother or even that crocodile used to be a woman. I'm like, I don't necessarily think so. You know, eh. maybe it'll be something that gets brought up, but I don't necessarily see that being the case. Um, but, you know, then there's a theory of, you know, uh, 
in that case, if like Dragon is a descendant of the celestial dragons in regards to his mother, then it's, you know, either Luffy's mother is just like some normal woman or possibly a, another member of the Revolutionary Army. But like Ivanka mentioned that, she, you know, they didn't know that Gar that Dragon had a child, you know, so they didn't know about Luffy until like Luffy ended up in Impel Down and met Ivanka. And then we go from there. Um, but then, you know, so that's the concept of, like, well, Ivankov didn't know, so, I mean, like, who else would have known that, like, Dragon had a child, besides Garp, obviously, and, you know, Dragon's, you know, wife and or Luffy's mother, depending on how that relationship went, and the fact that, you know, Luffy was raised in Go was probably just, like, oh, Luffy, you know, raised in Fuchsia, Fuchsia Village was, like, oh, well, after Luffy was born, Dragon then, you know, took him and then gave him to Garp for, because he would be safer with Garp than running the revolution, than being with his father, who was currently running the Revolutionary Army, and it was still, like, that was, you know, that was 19 years ago, almost 20 years ago at this point in time, um, considering, like, just in general how long it's been, uh, between, like, all the voyaging that they've done and everything, it's closer to, like, 20, you know, closer to 20 years ago at this point in time that Luffy would have been born. And, you know, there's that whole concept of, like, you know, if Dragon did have, you know, Luffy, you know, while he was still building the Revolutionary Army, then, yeah, by a technicality, safer place for Luffy would probably be with Garp. You know, <sighs> Dragon, well, I'm gonna have a child... And this whole place, like, Baltigo does not seem like the safest pr place to have a baby. I mean, like, they had Sabo there and a whole bunch of other kids, like, Koala and such, that were training to become, you know, Revolutionary Army members and everything like that. But it's just like, that does not seem like the best place to have a small child. <laughs> Particularly a baby, if that's where they were already at with Baltigo. But, you know, it's like, Dragon would have been like, well... This is not a safe place to raise a child, so I'm going to get in contact with my dad. <laughs> and then, like, you know, gave Luffy to Garp. And then Garp then took Luffy back to Fuchsia Village and, like, raised him and then eventually dropped him off in the woods to be raised by, you know, mountain bandits. Because reasons. Um, <laughs> because Garp and obviously Dragon don't necessarily fall under good parenting habits, as I went over in my... Um, Mother's, you know, my Father's Day and my Grandparents' Day videos um, last year. Um, yeah. Now, that doesn't fall under good parenting habits. Um, but the other flip side of that theory is that it's not Dragon that's a descendant of a celestial dragon, that it was Luffy. That, like, during the same concept of, like, oh, Garp you know, met and married or met and fell in love with and had a child with a woman and that was, you know, Dragon's mother and she may have been like a normal woman or she may have been like just another member of the Marines. I mean, he did join the Marines at the same time that Suru did, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they were in the same place and that doesn't necessarily mean that she is Dragon's mother and I don't, I think that that may have, would have already been brought up if that was the case, but I don't necessarily think so. You know, it would have been like, instead of it being just Garp that was having an issue with like executing Ace, it may have also been, um, you know, Suru having an issue with that as well, because she would have then had like a, a bit more of a connection to Ace if that was the case. Um... But what we also see is, you know, then that theory is, like, then, you know, Dragon had, you know, Garp had Dragon, and then, like, Dragon was possibly still raised in Fuchsia Village, you know, not, you know, not seeing, you know, the world very well, you know, seeing the way that the Goa Kingdom treated everyone, and, like, growing up on, like, the other side of the wall, watching the Goa Kingdom and everything like that, probably similar to the way that, like, Luffy and Sabo and Ace did, even with Garp being his father, and with Garp, you know, making this rise through the Marines, you know, to be, you know, the hero of the Marines, and Garp the Fist, and, you know, the man that, you know, you know brought in Goldie Roger and everything like that. You know, you know, Dragon probably, possibly, via Garp, like, strong-arming him into it, would have joined the Marines. And then, you know, maybe he would have given the Marines a chance and everything like that. I mean, like, he's like, well, my dad's a Marine, and, you know, maybe that's not it. You know, maybe the rest of the Marines aren't as bad as I think they necessarily are. And, you know, then had, you know, joined the Marines himself and, you know, blah, 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 rose through the ranks. And then eventually, unfortunately, he came across something that, like, he couldn't ignore anymore. Stuff with the slaves, 
stuff of the way that the celestial dragons pe you know treat people maybe he learned what a buster call was i mean like ohara wouldn't have happened yet at that point in time because that didn't happen until after he would have already kind of started to form the revolutionary army because that was 22 years ago but it would have been maybe he learned about a buster call maybe a buster call happened on a different island somewhere else in the world while he was marine and maybe he was stationed you know on one of the ships that had to be there for the buster call and the result of that was he saw them destroy this island and he just like maybe that was one of the things that just made dragon just start to lose whatever um whatever admiration he had for the marines and everything and like you know possibly him and garp had like this huge argument type of a thing of oh well you know you you know how could you be a part of this you know or, you know organization that continues to do these horrible things and everything like just like list of like all the different crimes that like he's seen the marines allow to happen the slavery allowing the celestial dragons to literally walk down the street and like take someone's wife or take someone's child or shoot someone just because they choose to or whatever the case may be or you know like a buster call or you know taking bribes from pirates or whatever like what happened with you know the, the freaking rat captain guy that was you know taking bribes from arlong and everything like that and you know so, so we see a lot of that but then you know dragon then like just like left the marines and then pretty much from there it's still kind of the same concept of he you know <clears throat> left the marines and then went and started to build up the revolutionary army and then in that time frame possibly like i don't know via whatever his devil fruit power is the wind wind fruit or whatever he you know made several trips to marijua to like spy on them like you know morley and carusu and him maybe like made several trips to you know marijua with you know morley's push push fruit because we don't know exactly when morley joined the crew joined the revolutionary army or carusu or anything like that we don't know when they joined but it may have been like oh they were these initial supporters of him and then they like build the revolutionary army up from that like they maybe have well we know morley had her devil fruit at that point in time because she's the one that made level 5.5 and impel down and she had already escaped and impel down at this point in time so we already know about that but eventually it would have been that you know dragon maybe ended up finding a celestial dragon that had similar ideals to him you know maybe had gone through something similar to what happened with you know uh milzigard i'll get to milzigard a little bit more later because he's a big part of this uh part of this theory that i have and you know maybe eventually found you know the two of you know he found this other celestial dragon and like you know female celestial dragon and they fell in love and then like they had luffy and then still concept of like oh well it's one thing to have a child that has the d in their name it's another thing to have a child that is literally the son of the most wanted man in the world you know at that point in time and you know so you know dragon would then have to take luffy and like give him to garp for garp to then take to you know goa and then have him raised there in fuchsia village and everything which still pretty much everything then still goes the same for luffy he's like doesn't know who his mother is doesn't know who his father is dragon possibly doesn't or like garp probably doesn't even know who his mother is at this point in time no matter what the scenario um he's probably thinking oh maybe she's dead or whatever at this point in time and that could quite possibly be it <sighs> you know that could have been the case um but you know somehow luffy ended up with garp and then Ray's in fuchsia um so that kind of is like the main meat for like where those two theories come from i kind of subscribe to possibly a little bit more likely that like dragon is a descendant of a celestial dragon that like him and that like his mother was a celestial dragon you know possibly that makes a little bit more sense than like because he would have had to have met this other celestial dragon this female celestial dragon during the same time that he was like building up the revolutionary army and that's a little bit harder to swallow um not necessarily impossible because it could have been he knew her when he possibly may have been stationed at Marijua at some point um or had to like guard her at some point and then they you know kind of fell in love same concept of you know either dragon or garp were the ones that fell in love with a female celestial dragon then had you know their respective son <clears throat> garp had dragon then and dragon had luffy one way or the other and i would find it very <laughs> or there's the whole other concept of like dragon himself is a descendant of the celestial dragons and you know just you know because like his mother was a celestial dragon and then it's oh 
not just him, it's also he fell in love with a female celestial dragon as well, possibly like, you know, childhood friend of his as a celestial dragon, and then they had Luffy. Which is just like that Luffy is the like doubly descendant of a celestial dragon, and he would actually be like two thirds celestial dragon in that concept. <laughs> because not only would his father be half celestial dragon, his mother would then have been full celestial dragon. <laughs> so it's like, that's just the other side of that concept, which is just kind of funny. Um, it was just like, that popped into my head. I'm like, well, if that was the case, <laughs> Luffy's like two thirds celestial, like uh, three fourths, excuse me, three fourths celestial dragon in that concept. Um, if like both Garp and Dragon fell in love with a uh, celestial dragon, I hear the dog in the hallway. Um, hi. He's a puppy. He's a puppy. You get a dog treat. You get a puppy treat. You get to see the puppy. Hi. Hi. How are you? He's like, you're talking about royalty, so I came in here because I is the prince of the house. Yeah, I know. That's what you think you are. Right? That's not what I think I am. That's what I know I am. I is prince of house. He's like, oh god, no. <laughs> okay, I'll take that off your head. There you go. There you go. Mommy has to go back to the video. <laughs> there you go. No, you can't have the window right now. It gets too bright in here. I will open it when I'm done. And he's like, but I want it now. You have plenty of space to lay on the bed. You're fine. Okay, so um, back to the back to the theory that I have here. So the the basic history that we of course has have for the celestial dragons is that at some point during the void century, you know. 800 to you know 900 to 800 years ago is you know roughly is when we have the void century and you know during that time frame there's this supposedly huge war between them and the you know joy boy the, the leader of this great civilization and everything like that between the 20 kings in this case and then eventually the 20 kings uh founded the world government and from there you know, they start to, you know, found the world government. We also know that they, you know, like toppled the Lunarians from on top of the red line at this point in time and, you know, sent them into exile and, you know, probably killed a large number of them and then sent them the others, you know, hid in exile for a long time um, for like, you know, 800 some years until, you know, King joined Kaido's crew. Um, but we also see during that time frame is, you know, we have the the one family, the Nepaltari family, of course, it just goes back to Alabasta and continues to rule over their country there um, as the king and as, you know, the, the rulers of that country, because they think that they're better suited to be there than on top of Marijua, which is true. And then, of course, now irony of that is that now they're, they're princess of the kingdom. You know, Vivi is now friends with Luffy and the Straw Hats and everything. And, you know possibly also been kidnapped at the moment by the world government, but we'll see what happens with that. Um, her and Sabo, yeah. Uh, admittedly, I would think that, like, Sabo and his family, Sabo and the Celestial, in the, uh, the Revolutionary, Russian, bleh, I can't talk, uh, Sabo and the rest of the Revolutionary Army, since, like, because Robin, you know, stayed with them for two years, may have learned about the fact that, oh, well, Luffy's actually friends with the Princess of Alabasta. And, you know, Luffy and the crew are these friends of hers because, like, they helped protect her country several, you know, a little while ago and, you know, blah, 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 blah. So there's, like, this possibility that maybe, like, Sabo knows that, like, Vivi knows Luffy. And maybe they, you know, talk to each other about that. It's just like, oh, you're Luffy's brother. Yeah, I am. <laughs> type of thing. You know, just, like, have that concept. I thought Ace was his brother. Well, Ace was his brother. Our brother. It's a, it's a, it's a sad topic. We gotta talk about that. Yeah, I, I, I grew up with Luffy and Ace. <laughs> funny talk between Sabo and Vivi that would be hilarious um but you know then you know sometime between you know 800 years ago and then you know 33 years ago is when Homing left you know Homing left you know Marie Joie Homing you know Don Quixote Homing left Marie Joie with his wife and his two sons and you know we know what happens with them nothing good happened there 
you know, homing was much too naive. I actually have another theory about homing that I'm going to be bringing up in a different video soon um, that I that I kind of just thought of at one point. And I'm just like, well, that would help solve a couple of problems, but that'll be a different video. Um, and, you know, eventually it is, you know, that, you know, everything happens with Doflamingo. And like, we know this via the backstory and everything like that. We got during Dressrosa. And then the other side of that is somewhere in that time frame, you know, you know, 50, you know, 78 years ago is when Garp was born. And then, you know, 55 years ago, or excuse me, 56 years ago, 56 years ago is when Garp, Garp joined the Marines, 55 years ago is when Dragon was born. And, you know, from, you know, from that timeline that we get, there's this huge, you know, 750 year some gap where, you know, we know that like, um, Tequila Wolf was like started to, you know, be built in that time from the giant freaking bridge in the East Blue, you know, it started to be built at that point in time. And I don't necessarily think that these celestial dragons that, you know, the original 19 kings that settled on Marie Joie, yes, they definitely had their, you know, heads of their asses. And they definitely were probably not necessarily the best people. And it may have been like the 20, you know, the 20 kings that founded the world government. There were like these 20 kingdoms that worked together to like fight off this, this great kingdom that was led by Joy Boy, possibly from what we understand. Um, and Joy Boy and like his allies, Wano and, uh, you know, the, you know, uh, the re uh, uh, Fishman Island and like probably several other uh, races were like, um, races and uh, countries were like allies of the great kingdom at that point in time, possibly Elbath, possibly like possibly the ancient ancestors of like the Kuja and like some of the other ones were like all working with them. And like from what, you know, from like our general concept is, you know, possibly the 20 kings were not necessarily all like evil kings. The only two of them that we really know about is Vivi's ancestor that like left and ended up going back to Alabasta because like they didn't want to live on top of Marijua. And then, you know, Do Flamingo's ancestor, the Don Quixote king at the time, and we know that he was not a good king with the way that he treated the Tontadas. And then, you know, that's when the Riku family then took over. And, you know, sometime in that time frame, you cannot tell me that like another celestial dragon did not leave Marijua. And you know, the, the, you know, from the little bits that we understand, which is, that's basically what this concept, what's this theory hinges on. And I'll, I'll explain that in a second. You know, we, un, from what we think, it's like, oh, the 20 kings, the majority of the 20 kings, maybe we're not the best people. Or it may have been like the original 20 kings may have been rather decent people and just wanting to like protect their kingdoms. Maybe they didn't like the spread of this other kingdom, you know, having so much influence over the world. And then from there, they ended up, you know, after they defeated the this other kingdom, this great kingdom, and formed the world government, it may have been like some of the older kings may have died, and it may have been like their sons then took over these rights of kings. And maybe their sons were, you know, may have been like a lot worse than them. And those and then like you know then the, the 19 of the kings moved to the red line um you know marie and everything like you know Eam sama comes in with you know comes in there somewhere along the line you know might be the might be this you know immortal god or zombie or ghost or whatever or you know whatever the case may be that Eam sama is but you know he's like the the full-on ruler of the celestial dragons with the Goro say underneath him, and then you know the rest of the celestial dragons underneath that, with not really possibly even have any idea that like Im Sama exists, because like most people know that Im Sama does not doesn't don't know that Im Sama exists. Possibility that like Dragon might, and there's a possibility that like Doflamingo might know, which also goes into my uh my homing theory that I have thought of that I'll be doing soon. Um, but what we see happen is, um, you know, or kind of what we assume happened is that then maybe initially they didn't have like all this whole concept of like, oh, we gave them the world government, therefore we are gods. It may have been like this within the first two or three generations is where that concept may have started. And then because there were these 20 kings, you know, these 19 kings, these celestial dragons that they ended up calling themselves 
from there, you know, there was like, oh, build me this bridge from this island to this island in the East Blue. And then, like, of course, they did that. And, like, you know, several hundred years later, it was still being built. I don't remember exactly when that was started, but, like, some point in that time frame, like, this, this bridge started to be built. And, you know, it was built by slave labor and everything like that. And, you know, that's that's just a horrible thing to have happen. But from what we see from that is eventually, you know, Homing has this change of heart. And he decides that he's going to leave Marie Joie and goes down to live in the world, you know, the lower realm. We know horrible things end up happening to him and his family because he's much too naive and just blabs the fact that they're celestial dragons. And if he hadn't said that, even to a degree with the way that like Doflamingo acted, people probably would have figured it out, but maybe it wouldn't have been as quickly. Because, you know, Doflamingo was still very much the spoiled little brat type of thing, very much like, where are the slaves? Why, aren't, why isn't everybody bowing to me in the streets and everything like that? The other example that we have, also from the Doflamingo fan, from the Don Quixote family, is Milzegard Doflamingo. And in regards to that, it is, you know, after Jinbei becomes a warlord, which is like, takes place, of course, after, you know, Fisher Tiger led his raid on Marie Joie and freed, you know, hundreds and hundreds of slaves, including the Boa sisters um, and, you know, Koala and like several, you know, several hundred others that managed to escape during that time frame. You know, during that time frame is also, you know, then, you know, the, the Sun Pirates are formed and then, you know, eventually, you know, Fisher Tiger is, you know, dies. And then, of course, Jimbei becomes a warlord and then, like most of the uh, rest of the uh, slaves that had to be fishmen, the fishmen slaves were then sent back to, um, you know, the Ryugu Kingdom at that time. And, of course, during this whole time, it was from, you know, when Orohime, when, uh, sorry, I'm watching Bleach a lot right now. So I have Orohime, but uh, Oro, uh, you know, Otohime is the queen, of course. And, you know she goes and she's still like preaching to people and trying to get them to understand the concept of like no we deserve to live on the surface and everything like that and of course this is when you know don quixote milzegard shows up and he you know tries to bring his slaves back with him and then you know he ends up getting you know shot but he's like protected by otohime at this point in time and via certain interactions he has with her, we know that over like 10 years that changed him because like he took her to the surface up to Marie Joie and like got this, these, you know, this decree from the rest of the celestial dragons that, oh, if you can get, you know, a majority of you know, this many signatures from your people, then we will consider, you know, finding a way to help move, you know, Fishman Island to the surface whatever that would entail, <laughs> but like move Fishman Island. We're going to pick Fishman Island up and move it up here. Um, uh, flame clouds, Kaido, ask Kaido. Um, he has a concept of how to do this. Um, but, you know, Milzegar goes through this whole change of character because he realizes that he is as much as he's been raised his entire life to think that he is this celestial dragon, that he is this, you know, holy deity capable of no wrong because whatever I do is fine, you know, he realizes that that's wrong. And he sees the error of his ways. And of course, from what we hear from uh, Roswald, uh, that, you know, Duncan, you know, Milzegard, you know, freed all of his slaves, pays his servants, doesn't, you know, doesn't do the other things. You know, if he, like, buys slaves, he, like, frees them right away or whatever, so that way they're not slaves anymore. And, you know, you know, maybe did something like that. And, you know, from what we understand, that's, of course, considered crazy by the rest of the Celestial Dragons. It's just like, oh my god, why is he doing this type of a thing? And my... My theory is that somewhere within the 800 years, you know, 750 years between when, you know, Garp was born and, you know, it would be like 720 years in that time frame before, like, Garp was born, there was another celestial dragon family that, like, left Marie Joie. And my theory is that this was the monkey family. 
Don't know what kingdom I would say that they had ruled over. We don't know. I don't have a concept for that. I doubt it was the Goa kingdom. That would be irony if it was the Goa kingdom. Uh, but I don't know, you know, because we don't know every single other kingdom in the new, you know, in One Piece. You know, maybe they ruled over, I don't know, maybe the monkey family originally ruled over just one of these other random kingdoms. And, you know, eventually what ended up happening was, you know, one of the celestial dragons that was a member of this family or like maybe a couple of them maybe had like a similar experience to what Milzegard went through, you know. Maybe they ended up finally having this understanding that was just like, our slaves aren't slaves, our slaves are people. And it may have just been a very small group of them, but they may have figured out that like, okay, this is wrong, what we do with the slaves. And, you know, maybe what they decided to do was they decided to leave Marie Joie, take their, their money with them, take their slaves with them, and then like free their slaves and then like find their slaves homes you know, where their slaves initially came from, like try to get them back to their, back to their homes. Um, and, you know, eventually, you know, then like the, the, the family, the, the monkey family, the celestial dragon monkey family ended up, you know, settling somewhere in the East Blue because that's where they have to end up for Garth to be born in the East Blue. They end up in the East Blue and, you know, maybe, you know, they still settle down. They still have a fair amount of their money left over. So that's not really an issue. And maybe they at least work on like maybe improving some of the other areas around them. Um, not necessarily the Goa Kingdom because maybe they didn't get to the Goa Kingdom. But like maybe they work on like trying to like, you know, help some of the other villages that are around them. Because we don't know all the kingdoms that are in the East Blue. Um, you know, all the kingdoms and islands that are in the East Blue. Because we didn't know about to kill a wolf until, like, Robin landed there and, like, oh, she's in the East Blue. She's like, okay. Um, but, you know, like, eventually it is, like, they settle down and, like, maybe they end up in an area that hasn't really been affected by the Celestial Dragon, so they're not really persecuted by them. Also, maybe they, these people saw what these, uh, these Celestial Dragons were doing in regards to, you know, what these people were doing in regards to, like, trying to get slaves back to their homes and, like, freeing them and getting them back to their homes and, like, then maybe, like, giving some of their own money to these families that these slaves had come from. You know, some, some variation of that. And so maybe they saw that, okay, well, these ones aren't as bad, or maybe they didn't know that they were celestial dragons at the time, maybe, because, like, you know, uh, you know, it wasn't like world knowledge that like Doflamingo was a celestial dragon. That wasn't like world knowledge because Law didn't know that until Doflamingo told him. As far as I'm aware, he didn't know that. If, if I remember correctly, I rewatched, I watched Dressrosa recently and I don't, I, I remember Law being very surprised when he found out that Doflamingo was a celestial dragon. If I remember correctly. So he didn't know. But, you know, I'm assuming, like, higher-ranked members of the world government knew. Obviously, like, you know, Sengoku knew. Gart pro possibly knew. Maybe Suru. Um, you know, maybe the Admirals knew. At that time that he was a, a former Celestial Dragon, um, maybe they didn't know the exact extent of what happened with Homing, but they knew that, like, Doflamingo had been a Celestial Dragon. And that's why he had, like, the ability to, like, exploit the Celestial Dragons into allowing the world government to make him, uh, the Marines to make him into a warlord. Um, so it's, like, it's not this unheard of concept that, like, the Celestial Dragons, like, a group, a small group of them may have left Marie Joie at some point, because, like, you know, branch families of branch families of whatever, um, left Marie Joie and took their wealth with them and, you know, freed their slaves and, brought, you know, gave their slaves, you know, took their slaves back to their own homes and, like, gave them some money to them as, like, we know it doesn't comp compensate for everything, but it's at least something to a degree and, like, gave them that and then, like, they did that for the rest of their slaves and then they settled down and then you know even with going by like the monkey family maybe this is like the next generation or whatever and like they've been raised around people a lot more so they don't have this concept that Doflamingo had of just like why isn't everybody bowing to me in the streets and everything like that so it would be that this celestial dragon family left Marie Joie did these good things for their slaves former slaves and then settled down somewhere in the east blue Maybe they had originally, maybe their kingdom had originally been from the East Blue or whatever. 
And then eventually they ended up finding this branch of the D clan. And maybe they ended up, you know, it's like they would have grown up on these like, oh, the D clan or, you know, those with D in their name are like, you know, boogeymen to the celestial dragons. But maybe they realized that, oh, that's not true. Maybe these D clan were actually very good. Maybe they were similar to dragon in the fact that they were trying to, you know, protect people and different things like that, you know, save people, make things better in the world. And maybe it was that the, the celestial dragons, the monkey family, you know, decided to be like, well, how about we join forces with them? And from there, we will be able to then, you know, maybe use our resources to help them more. And it may have been eventually, like, it may have been like, you know, you know, fully, you know, merged in regards to a marriage where a member of the monkey family, a male member of the monkey family, married a female member of the clan of D, because we know that females can hold the, you know, D, uh, D initial because Rouge does, uh, Rouge, did, Rouge did, and then, you know, eventually it was like they got married, and then that was where the whole, you know, formation of, like, the monkey D clan came from, and then eventually, like, one of their descendants is, you know, Garp's father, and then Garp's, you know, parents got married, and then they had Garp, and then Garp had Dragon, and then Dragon had Luffy, and then you can go with the whole theory of, oh, part of the reason that Garp, you know, my thought is like, well, one of the other reasons Garp was stationed at Marie's Wall was because, you know, where he could have met, like, Dragon's Celestial Dragon Mother, <laughs> you know, Mother who was a Celestial Dragon, was that, um, you know, Garp may have been, like, the first one of this family to join the Marines. And eventually it was obviously, like, they would have eventually, like, lost all of their money somewhere along the lines. Maybe they had a stupid person that had, like, a gambling problem or whatever. And, like, they eventually just, like, lost all their money or just, like, eventually the money just ran out because they were, like, helping so many people to a degree. Maybe, like, some of that money went, like, to help, like, people in Syrup Village to form that village. Or maybe it went to help, like, Kokoyashi Village and, like, maybe helped form some of these other villages down the line that like eventually like some of the other crew members came from you know maybe they had a connection to the to, you know people at Shimasuki village at some point in time because there is a connection there between Shimasuki village and the revolutionary army we just don't know what that is exactly yet but maybe there was a slight connection there maybe that was something that happened you know when you know when that happened when you know um you know Kuina's grandfather landed there um, but that's a different story. Um, but, like, what we see would have been Garp would have eventually, you know, joined the Marines. And then my thought is that he was stationed at Marie Joie specifically because he was this monkey D. He was a monkey, as in a descendant of, like, this other branch of a celestial dragon family. And he had the will of D. And it may have been they stationed him at Marie Joie initially to keep an eye on him. And, you know, maybe he rose through the ranks rather quickly with as strong as he was. And eventually that got to the point where maybe he did catch the eye of a female celestial dragon. And then, you know, irony would have been if that, like, that celestial dragon was a member of the Don Quixote family. <laughs> that would have been funny. Um, oh, no, Luffy is related to Do Flamingo. <laughs> Oh, I know there are fanfics out there where Luffy is, like, a cousin of Doflamingo or something like that, and it's hilarious. Um, uh, I know that that's a fanfic, because uh, I read it. Um, but uh, one of the things would be that, you know, then, like, Garp and this female celestial dragon would then fall in love, and then they would have dragon, and then dragon would, you know, eventually have Luffy. Possibly still the same, same concept of, like, you know, maybe his wife was a celestial dragon as well, and that's why nobody knew about Luffy, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then I was just like, Luffy is like this to set it, but this and this, it's like all this other stuff. They're just like, Luffy is not the chosen one, but he is the chosen one, but he has all this other stuff. But then there's the same concept of like, you know, the will of D, because we have so many other characters that have the will of D in their name. There's, you know, Law, there's Ace, there's Roger, there's Garp, there's Dragon, there's, you know, Teach, there's Rouge, there's, you know, Rox D. Zebek. You know, we have all of them, and then there's possibly, you know, other people that we don't know about that could still have the will of D in their name. 
you know, we don't know Kaido's full name. Maybe is you know, maybe it is Ka you know, maybe D is in his name. Well, he does have a D in his name, but a different D. And, you know, same thing with, like, Shanks. You know, we don't know their full name. So there's the possibility that, you know, the D might be in their name. It's just that has not been revealed to us yet. And it may just be this concept of all these other celestial dragon families have eventually, you know, so many of them have just become so inbred up top between marrying each other and only having like a limited gene pool because, you know, we don't know. It's like we know that they like marry slaves because like Charlos wanted to marry someone. And this is just insert for me to be able to say. And then of course he got punched out by Luffy. And then two years later he got punched. You know, he got like whacked in the face with the giant bat by Millsgard because I will use any excuse I have to be able to show that image. Those images of you know, Charlo's getting punched in the face because they are so satisfying. Um, <laughs> I had to. I had to use them. It is, it is, it is in my code. Whenever I do a video about this stuff, I about these types of things, I have to show something of Charlo's getting punched in the face because it is so satisfying. Um, but what we also see is, of course, um, you know, Milzegard has become this you know, this good celestial dragon willing to, you know, he protects Shirohoshi and he's willing to help, um, you know, the, the Ryugu family as much as he can during the time frame that they're at Marijua for the reverie. And, you know, by a technicality, he is like an adjacent ally of the Straw Hats because he's an ally of an ally of the Straw Hats. So he's technically an adjacent ally of the Straw Hats. And I have a feeling that if he, you know, if he found out what Luffy and his crew did for um, the Ryugu Kingdom, he would say that he is an ally of them. If he could, he would, he would do that. He would like give whatever he could to like help them. I would think he might do that. That seems possibly something within, you know, Milzegard's wheelhouse. Um, but that's that's basically the theory that I have is that like. Luffy, Dragon, and Garp are all descendants of a celestial dragon. However, it would be not, you know, not an exact like, oh, it was Garp's grandfather that was a celestial dragon. It was, you know, a couple of generations back type of a thing. So that's, that was just kind of the theory that I thought of. of well, I mean, <laughs> that, that, um, that would be an uh, interesting way of putting it. Um, and, you know, it's like, it, you know, it's like they lost their money because of other reasons or blah, 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 blah. They eventually became poor because the little bits that we've seen of Garp when he was a kid and like one of the sketches Oda drew, Garp looked rather poor. Um, you know, so it's just like that's kind of the case. So, uh, and also I, I stuck with the Hunger Games shirt today because, um, well, the, um, the elites in, uh, you know, Hunger Games kind of remind me a bit of the uh, Celestial Dragons and of course uh, Katniss and her group kind of remind me a bit of the Revolutionary Army of course. So that's what we have there. So I thank you very much for watching. I hope you were able to follow along with my little bit of a uh, convoluted theory but I, I hope I um, explained things enough and then as I said I have like a I have like a Don Quixote homing theory that I thought of while I was kind of working on this theory just because of a few other things that lined up in my research. So I'll, I'll be doing that video soon as well. So I thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video and I hope that you have a nice rest of your day. Bye. Puppy. Rainy. 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 Okay, fine. He's not going to say goodbye. Bye. If the status I was born into can be of help to both you and your people, then it's worth doing so.